Hello everyone, this is Speeding Events, and I think we can safely say this is the first time I've ever used another launcher to boot up a Steam game. This is Fallout London, which uh, I've been paying a lot of attention to. I, well, it kind of was until they said it was getting delayed because of uh, Bethesda's new patch, and I love that their solution to that was to just release it for the old version of the game, which uh, I imagine is turning a lot of people off. A lot of people don't want to go through the whole downgrade process, but guess what? If you haven't played it in a while, it might just be sitting in your Steam library, like mine, and upgraded. So I was able to just slap this on and uh, I haven't tried it out. I don't know if this is going to work. I, I had to disable a whole bunch of mods with Vortex. I had to pull Fallout Script Extender out. This will work or it won't? We'll find out now. Uh, survival? Yeah. Mods are currently loaded. Well, that's not a good sign, but let's see what happens. War. War never changes. Since the dawn of man, when tribes beat each other to death over necessities, the will to power has been the driving force of mankind. When the great fires of humanity's ambition ravaged the earth, it was not our doing. For the bloodiest chapter of human history had only begun. Big in this artwork. Britain was not spared the hellfire. And London, a monument to mankind's ambition, was returned to the state of nature. Those who emerged from the ashes did so from a network of underground bunkers known as Pindar stations. And so it was that the embers of civilization would ignite once again. Over a century later, through the military might of the Tommies, an aristocratic parliament continues to give orders. Okay, so we have some society. But few are still listening. In the Tower Hamlets, the fifth column rises. Training drums beat and uniforms march, all in the name of their dear leader, Eve Varney. So it looks like they're shooting for something a uh, bit between Tons. Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Mentioned. A great army gathers strength. Styled on the Camelot Knights of days past, they're headed once more unto the breach. For there are whispers of angels beneath this hallowed land, a curtain of illusion and intrigue, a puppeteer behind the scene. Only one thing is certain. Those who take the road to Westminster will be forever changed. Because in mankind's pursuit of power, there is no price too high, no life too valuable, and no ideal too sacred. Because war, war never changes. I like they've kept the uh, traditional follow themes, have a twist of their own on top of it. Um, this new mail subject has been performing adequately. Oh, <laughs> and visuals, nothing unusual, perfectly usual. Quiet, Smythe will be pleased. How are they in appearance? Uncertain. Perhaps we should take a closer examination. I'm inclined to go with something generic. Uh, let's just scroll through some random faces. Phase five. You know what? Maybe not that generic. Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Yeah, let's go with that. Excellent. A rapid progress is being made. And with zero anomaly. Of course. Now, what about their physical and mental development? 
you know, while I have a vague memory of what makes for a good build in Fallout 4, I'm guessing they probably uh, mix things up. Let's go with a little bit of luck, a little bit of strength. Let's uh, let's make it pretty average across the board. Let's make it really average across the board. Just see where that goes. Okay, so I think I picked the two I want. I like the idea of Kamikaze here. Um, you get more action points, but you take more damage. That's kind of in keeping with what survival mode's all about. I would have kind of preferred that it was a bit more damage instead of action points, but yeah, we'll do Kamikaze. And Puritan. So that's going to give me more strength and endurance, but when I use drugs, I get the opposite. But you're only under the effects of drugs for a relatively short period of time. Now, it might actually stick around for a while. We'll have to find out, but I'm going to take it. What? You guys didn't like that? I trust everything is going well. Perfectly. Tremendously so. In fact, it may be our best. Oh, it definitely is. Good. The subject looks ready for conditioning. Within a week or so, we can wrap up phase one. What do you want to bet that involves Thank euthanizing you. me? I'll set phase one on autopilot. See that it's done. Seems to be rousing a bit. A little bit. Not to worry. Let's put them back under. <laughs> okay, I've lost uh, movement here. It looks like that fade to black there was scripted. Well, I mean, it was definitely scripted. Seems a bit different. I don't remember uh, the sort of um, destructible environments. This is kind of a minor destructible environment, but uh, I don't remember any of that happening in Fallout 4. Oh, <laughs> I gotta remember I don't have uh, HUD++. Plus plus, uh, I also don't have uh, the pit pad. If you recall from my, uh, my play of Fallout 4, I was playing with uh, the pit pad and uh, no pausing when uh, when I was using the pit pad. So we will have to see how that winds up working. Pit pad being a, uh, instead of the pit boy, it was a, um, like a tablet. Yeah, it didn't pause the game because I was using fossils, which I'm not using now, so I should be able to pause. Okay, so crouch worked getting down. Why can I not stand up? Okay, well, worked that time. Let's get back down, though. This is the first time I've actually recorded a game using headphones and my, uh, my new desktop mic or tabletop mic or whatever you want to call it, as opposed to just using the, uh, the mic on the headphones. It's going to be a little bit difficult to actually work on the levels, but I'm guessing it'll sound a lot better. What do we have here? Thank you for playing our mod. Um, I I could go through and read that all uh, aloud. Um, as much as uh, these these guys definitely deserve something like that, I'm guessing that people just <laughs> would just tune off the video if I were to do that. So uh, that's unfortunate, but you know it is what it is. Bet you the exit's just like staring right at me. You guys are all screaming. Okay, well, that was not the direction. Is 
So while I'm able to walk in that direction, uh, apparently I'm not supposed to. Oh, apparently even walking near it is a problem. Well, it's telling me I need to go that way. I didn't seem to find anything this way. Let's have another look. Oh, so back in the first room, there is a hole in the wall. Is this, uh, is this our exit? Is a ladder? No, no, this is just a hole in the wall. This is, um, discouraging. <laughs> I'm literally in the, uh, the first area, and I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. And I get that a lot of people like their... Their games to have you know less hand holding than you you get in uh, a Fallout 4, but there's there's kind of a point where it's like, well, what exactly am I missing here? So it turns out, in here, in this dark shadowy area that I went through like five times, there is a door, and that's a little infuriating. <laughs> what do we have at this terminal? Okay, randomly hit a unlocking button, apparently. Oh. <laughs> so these are rad shrews, apparently. Uh, from, the, um, from the terminal, they've been experimenting on these... I was about to say t for uh, to some end, but apparently uh, that end is to make them violent. We have, uh, what do we have? Device. I'm guessing this is going to be my Pip-Boy. Okay, so it's a tablet. Let's see how well animated this was. Uh, in my Fallout 4 playthrough with the uh, Pip-Pad, this animation was... Uh, hmm. Wasn't great, but uh, it was, you know, it only plays once, so it wasn't uh, the worst thing in the world. Not a great likeness. Let's choose some clothing. Okay, it looks like none of that is worth wearing. Utility belt, eh? Bit big for me. One size fits all, I suppose. So, uh... Bit of a text wall to start out with. Uh, generally speaking, you know, it's kind of nice to get these things rolling right off the bat. Get to the uh, the text dumps a little bit in, but oh, I, something different that they're going for clearly here. Well, anyone uh, who was here knows I'm coming now. <laughs> Nice to see someone drop a gun. We definitely heard gunshots earlier. Well, we have our uh, Follow 3 style uh, reveal when we come out this door. Oh, good. <laughs> Pick up the torch, okay. I guess that goes on the utility belt. That's a little bit more lore-friendly than uh, the way that the, the 
Pip Boy just magically covers the the nearby area in light. We have a mole rat tunnel here, I guess, or a shrew tunnel. Very convenient. Where are you going? Um, not sure. We're getting the uh, the skin bug that so plagued Fallout 4. But alas, it seems I'm not long for this world. The first place I get a chance to save and load. There was so much I wanted to do. Off you go then. Be seeing you. Let's see if I can uh, if I can save yet. Not yet. Moving into the next area, I dropped an autosave, which let me uh, load up again, and it did clean up the skin color bug that, uh, you know, plagues Fallout 4. This, uh, this is effectively vanilla outside of the mod, so there's a lot of little little problems that I'm not used to having in Fallout that just decide to come back. Um, as you guys may have picked up, I've lost uh, a wee bit of enthusiasm um, after spending 20 minutes looking for that door. Kind of hard to uh, fake the energy you need to to do a video like this, so I'm gonna have to cut cut the gameplay short there. As far as my impressions here, I I don't fault these guys for for what happened with the door. I'm guessing they had a bunch of people test it and they all saw it, and I just happened to be in the wrong place. That being said, there is the small possibility that that was their idea of a puzzle. I know that. That wouldn't be the first game I've played where that was the case. I mean, the entirety of Metro Exodus, their idea of a puzzle was go find the thing. And I just felt like reaching through the screen every time, like, guys, that's not a puzzle. The puzzle requires some thinking, not just going around and hitting E on everything. Um, but we'll give the benefit of the doubt and assume that, you know, once they get some feedback, they'll put a blinking light above it or something or... Uh, it doesn't have to be anything that stands out. I don't want to ruin the ambiance. But again, you know, I, I was right in that nook a couple times and just totally walked right past it without realizing it. Overall, though, this this seems pretty polished. Uh, I haven't come across any of the game breaking bugs that people do talk about. And people do talk about that, but it is fairly new. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they get well, those those cleaned up so the the bugs that I haven't seen. Hopefully, uh, little tweaks like making you know a door visible here and there. These are the kind of things that will naturally get fixed, get dealt with. Uh, you know, in the two or three weeks coming coming forward, the the kind of things that a AAA publisher like. Okay, you know, let's be generous and say Bethesda still a AAA publisher <laughs> um, that they they have uh, at their disposal. So, all in all, this looks great. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it some more time. Although I think I'm going to sit on it for a couple of weeks before, uh, before I see really where they're going to go with this. You guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.